and welcome to our presentation today about supercharging Google Classroom with GradeCam. I'm Kate Pylan, and I'm a customer success coach here with GradeCam. So I wanted to share some of these quick tips about how you can use GradeCam with your existing Google Classroom to supplement and support and supercharge the things that you can pull out of it in terms of your students learning and the things that you can do. So with that, let's just jump right into some of these capabilities. So GradeCam really is assessment anytime, anywhere. If you've used GradeCam in the past, you may have done it with paper, but you now have also the digital option with the student portal that can link right in your Google Classroom so that students don't have to go to multiple places. This helps you support students both in class and remote and support the different learning styles, either working with paper or working on a digital device. You can mix and match to find what works best for you, other teachers you work with, and your students. So it really is a flexible option to be able to find what works best for everyone. So with that, if I jump over to GradeCam to show you how you can work with your existing materials that you already have. So if you go right into an assignment, you may have always created these in the past, create your key as normal, nothing new there, but now to add your digital option is you can go into student portal clicking on student portal, and then you decide what your online access will be. I can also assign to the full classes, or if I want to assign to specific students, I can do that as well. So that these certain students may be the ones getting the digital access where the rest of the class may take it in class using the scan forms. I can adjust my window as well as what it giving them a timer if I would like to add in that timer. So no matter when they would complete this assessment by the end of the week, they will have 30 minutes to complete the assignment. They hit save, those students will get a specific assignment for them, and I have another one out for these full classes. What's beautiful then is right here in the open online access is you click on share to Google Classroom, and it'll pull up your Google Classes that you can click on and assign it directly to the class. This allows the students to go into the class, click on the assignment, and then click on the Google GradeCam link, they'll take them right in there so they can take your assessment there. This provides a very flexible opportunity that if you do have students that are still taking it in the class and you have some that have to do it digitally, all that data is going to come back to one place for you as the teacher so you don't have to go hunt that down in all different locations. The same great power of GradeCam, how you connect it to your Google Classroom. The next thing you can do is it works with your curriculum. You can attach a reading, an article, charts, graphs, other materials without having to retype it when you, re when you build that key. So when we go back into GradeCam and we take a look into our assignment, if I have already built my key, I don't have to rebuild my materials or retype my question. All you do is place in the correct key, or the build the question type, the same as how your, your assignment is with your curriculum you already have, and what is the answer if there is a straight answer. If there's not, you can always adjust to do the open response, so you're still collecting multiple choice and open response question types when you are editing. To edit your questions, if I click on it, I choose my different uh, question types that are available to me. But since I don't have to retype my materials, I just attach my document right there so this can be displayed right alongside the assignment if the students are taking this digitally. So I go into attachments, upload, and I find my documents from there. Now, if you're working in any of the Google tools, you do have the option as well to um, say download as PDF so the students can view it. Now, I'm also going to attach a chart so the students can see that if I have a chart or additional information that I have questions built in there, that could all be put there together. I check the box to show in Student Portal and hit Save. Now, let's take a quick look at how this will look for students. Also built in is a preview so you can see how these assignments appear for the student. Check the box in your online access after you've hit Student Portal and click on the preview I. Once I've clicked into that, this opens up just like my students would see it. You can see that there's that chart right there. If I want to jump back over to see what the test was, so I can see that right next to my key, I can zoom in. I have that timer built in, and I have a progress bar to see how much further I have to go. So by building that all in together, your students have the opportunity to work right alongside the class materials you may already have in place for your class without having to retype or rebuild it. It's all there for you. So that's a wonderful piece to being able to supplement with what you already have and attaching it for your students to have access. Next, 
the data that you're able to pull in from the assessments and the reports that you get in GradeCam can help you build your focus groups that you can use along with Google Classroom. Since you can reorganize that data and look at it in all the different ways, you can turn then back to your Google Classroom if you need to assign by groups. That's how you can go back to your Google Classroom, but the reports and the data that you pull into GradeCam helps you look a little bit deeper into student learning. So if I jump back over to GradeCam and let's dig into some data that I already have built in place. So I had some scans or submissions. Remember, paper, digital, all come back to the same place. I don't have to look at this in two different places to get my reports. With my reports, I can break this down into my score graph saying overall how we did, but I can build in focus group for the different levels if I need to put some focus there. You can even break it down into your item analysis if you know that there's areas that you need to circle back for the whole class or they're just specific students that you want to help. If you go student by question, this helps you to sort out and focus in on those students so that you can see, do I need to group these students together in one group so they can work on this task and skill? And how can I group my other students that need to do some sort of an extension activity because they did very well on the overall assignment? So those graphs and charts just take your data that much further for your student learners so you can supplement and support them in the areas of focus that they need and identify your challenges as well as your successes for your students. Next, you can also still share your assessments and share the data. This is really powerful. If you've done the grade cam assignments in the past, sharing it will allow you know, teachers to divide and conquer a unit. So one can create the assignment, you can share it with all your peer teachers, you can pull that data back for review during your PLC time. So divide and share the assignments. So if I jump back over to GradeCam, so I created this wonderful assessment with my attachments already made and I have all my key and ready to go, but I wanna share it with my team so that they can do it and then we can look at the data together next week. So if you go up to the title, share assignment, and then you can share to specific users and what permissions do they have? Don't forget to click add so that you can see their permissions down here. This will allow them to already have the assessment. They don't have to rebuild it and your data can come back together. Again, digital and paper are all in one place. So if you have a digital teacher partner, they can still collect the same kind of results and data that you're going to get with your paper assessments in class. Hit done. So that's really nice. Let me go over to another assignment that has some teacher shared data. So I'm gonna go into the assignment, go over to my reports, go down to teacher, by question or by standard. Both of them kind of break them down in different ways, but this allows us as a group to talk together where we had our wins and where we had our challenges. That opens the door to a more positive data culture to say, what resources do we need to help our students be more successful? Where are the holes or the gaps that we need to put some little more focus on? If one teacher had incredible success while others were maybe struggling, they can provide insight into what they did and share how they were successful in their classroom. If everybody is struggling together, what additional resources are needed? You have the data there to work with it. You can also break this down by class. So if you are a teacher working with multiple classes and areas, one class did really well, well, another class might have had some areas of struggle that they needed to further support. Those are different ways of massaging and working with those reports and data that you can get within GradeCamp. This really helps to build that positive culture because grade, the data from GradeCamp is so much at your fingertips. Next, connect with your standards or with performances. Since GradeCam is so flexible, you can easily add standards to all of your questions, and that will further make your reports even more robust to look at standards data. If you're looking at standards over multiple assignments, how you can compare that and help your students see growth over time, depending on the standards you're looking for. You can also look into performance-based rubrics using the observation form. So if you're looking at particular skills or tasks in line, we can break that down on criteria and in specifics. So let's jump in first to the standards. Now, what I always loved about GradeCam, and I think it's super important, is I can still collect scan data, but go back to my key later and add my standards after the fact if I didn't get them added before I needed to get the test out. And if this is shared, it will update for your shared teachers as well. I don't have to reshare the assignment. I don't have to rescan, and my students don't have to do anything additional. So if I click on it, I'll even show my standards. So I do have some standards tied, but this one didn't. So I'm going to add some standards here by clicking Modify. 
go straight into it, find the standard that I need. Maybe this is the one I'm going to add. I can add multiple standards. I can add multiple standards to multiple questions or multiple standards to one question. Whatever is gonna work best for your students and what you need to target their learning so that it'll help you go get that better learning data. So now when I go into my reports and go into my student by standard, I now have those three standards over a multiple question quiz to really look and see, yep, these are some areas of focus that I need to work with my students and how I can provide them very focused support. So you can add those standards after the fact. You can even adjust your performance band by district. If you have a district band, that's something that can be set up or you as an individual can adjust your performance band. I'm gonna adjust this one just to an, a basic mastery performance band so I can really build out my groups on those who need some additional support as well as those who are ready for an extension activity based on the standards but making it more simplistic on that performance band, I can reorganize that data, no additional work that I needed to do from the students and or from my other teachers. Also with that, if you're looking at like those skill-based performance base in your classroom, is definitely check out the observational assignment. This is something that is super duper awesome that if you are working with kids both in class and outside of it, because you can look for those skills that you're observing, write them all down on one sheet and collect in one scan. So here's an example of one that I created for a science fair project. You can see my criterion or my tasks are listed across the top and me as the teacher can come in and handwrite my responses in each column. That way, as I'm walking down the room, walking around the room, talking to the students about their science fair project, I can scoop them a score right there, take this back to my desk, scan in one scan, and then all that data is collected again. Each one of those criterion can be tied to a standard. So if I'm looking at that standard over time, in a different alternative assessment manner. It doesn't have to be a test. It can be that observation form, looking at what they're doing in class as a demonstration. So really kind of some flexibility there to supercharge by looking at your tasks, your standards, and the specifics of how you can support your students. And it's all as a supplement to what you're already doing in Google Classroom. If they have a project that's being turned in through Google Classroom, you can still grade it by hand using that observation form that you can then scan and have those standards attached as well as the power of a grade transfer. So you also still have access to Google, the grade transfer in your Google Classroom. And this is something that if you've used it in the past with your grade book, you can still use it in Google Classroom. Transfer those grades wherever you need to communicate that information to your parents or to your students, or just to get the grades into the grade book, wherever you need to have that. So the transfer still works. So if I go back over to GradeCam and I go into my assignment, I have the ability to review all of the assignments, the scores that I have in here, and then I can transfer this over to my grade book. So by still clicking on the transfer like you have in the past, choose the class that you are transferring and what you want to transfer, whether that be points, percentages, or even performance band. Those are all great options. You can transfer your standards data as well if you just want to transfer the scores for a standard. But I review my information. What am I going to do for those scores? If I want to enter zeros or if I want to skip them, I'm going to copy. I'm gonna go over to my Google Classroom. I place it in the top box and right click and then paste. And it plugs those scores right in so that my grades are done and communicated to my students as well as my parents. If you have a digital grade book that you need to get those into, you just jump back over to the grade book and throw them in there and transfer them instantly from there. So that way it works seamlessly with both your Google Classroom if you need to get your scores there or with your grade book, all of that information is available and easily transferred. So there's a lot of great functions and features to really boost what you're already doing in your Google Classroom and how GradeCam can further support your students and your learnings through that data that's actionable and easy to access, as well as providing the student portal, which gives you some additional tools like those timers or seeing your attachments right side by side, giving your teacher team a better data to review in your performance assessments and your standards, how you can look at assessing differently. All of these things are wonderful pieces to supercharge your Google Classroom using GradeCam. Thank you so much, and we can't wait to hear back from you.